All right, as we move along in the unit, module 16, uh, we're taking a look at the one of the most bizarre years in U.S. policy or U.S. history, 1968, which is called a tumultuous year. Um, politically, um, economically, in the war effort, it's going to be uh, topsy-turly. It's an election year. In 1967, 70, between 70 and 80% of the world, uh, country felt the war was, was doing, we were doing the right thing and the war was going in the right direction. 1968, that will change. Um, the North Vietnamese and the Viet uh, Cong, or the Viet Cong is the insurgents in the South, make a surprise attack on South Vietnam on the Chinese New Year. Um, they come across the border and attack a hundred different outposts on starting on January 30th. And they will march forward in the first two months, ca causing a ton of carnage on uh, the Vietnamese, the South Vietnamese. They killed thousands and thousands. They overrun our outposts. And this starts to play out on national television. And this just can't be happening because we're winning the war. Americans have been told night after night on the nightly news that we're winning the war, that Charlie's running from us, they don't want to face us. And um, we're going to end up losing 12 Air Force bases um, and the embassy at Saigon. Uh, this is when the American public will say enough is enough. Now, all of this, all of these losses will be recovered and the North Vietnamese will pay dearly. Uh, the Viet Cong will be shut down um, within six months. We will make huge advancements against them, but the, but the damage publicly for us is, uh, is gonna be immense. After the Tet Offensive, the support of the war went from between 70 and 80 to below 40 or at 40. The media now was completely openly criticizing the war. Um, the Robert McNamara, who had been the strategist that had the war of attrition, the body count, um, had been replaced by a guy by the name of Clark um, Clifford as a defense secretary. <clears throat> and Clifford will make some remarks that find their way leaking into the New York Times uh, that the war is simply unwinnable. Um, when your defense secretary says a war you're involved in is unwinnable, it's tough to sway the, pu the public back into your, into your corner. Um, Johnson's popularity, President Johnson's popularity went, went way down, way, way down. In March, well, just let me back up a little bit. Um, Kennedy is now seen as a viable candidate. Robert Kennedy is John F. Kennedy's brother, and he's looked as a viable candidate to run against um, Johnson. But he decides that you're not going to go up against somebody in your own party. You're going to split the party. It's going to cause them to have a sense of confusion within the party. So he steps aside, and I think he would have won or he would have definitely fractured uh, Mr. Johnson's popularity. But a gentleman by the name of Eugene McCarthy, who was very much of an anti-war candidate um, from Minnesota, would take the challenge. In the early primaries of 68, um, in Iowa and that, which is in March and April of 68, Johnson will defeat McCarthy, but he defeats him by a very slim margin. And... Um, Johnson is looked upon as a very weak candidate and the House within the Democratic Party is very much split. Uh, the Democrats will always have a little bit harder time because they, they, they have more areas of constituents, <clears throat> minorities, farmers, um, urban city, uh, Protestant, um, and, and majority Catholic, they have a lot of people they have to <clears throat> keep underneath them to stay happy. And they've got a fracturing of that right now in 1968. 
In March of 1968, Johnson makes an enormous <clears throat> announcement that we're going to end the escalation policy in Vietnam. We're going to we're going to quit taking the war to them. We're going to stop bombing them, and we're going to make South Vietnam big, take a larger role. This is what a lot of the people in America are wanting to do. They feel it's a civil war. It has nothing to do with us. And then at the end of his announcement, he says he will not seek nor accept the nomination of president for the next term. This is very different back then than it is today. Um, here we are with two and a half years left in the first term of Mr. Trump's presidency. And they're already, you got, what, 12 candidates in the Democratic side, and they're already talking about 2020. Um, this is 1968. The election will be in November. And he's saying in March that he's not going to run. Um, a couple months later, in uh, June of uh, 68, Martin Luther King will be assassinated. Um, we'll have the country, Detroit, New York, L.A., Chicago, we're all on fire. People are disillusioned. People are furious. Two months after that, in August of 68, uh, Robert Kennedy will be assassinated by a gentleman by the name of Saran Saran. Parents were not overly um, creative with the name. A Palestinian immigrant who was not pleased with Mr. Kennedy's support towards uh, Israel, he shot and killed in a kitchen after delivering a speech um, in L.A. And now you're going into the fall of 68 without a candidate. Colleges are protesting and violence is breaking out. Kent State no, I'm sorry, Kent State's a ways away, so we'll, we'll wait on, we'll hold on that. Um, after Johnson steps down and Robert Kennedy being killed, it's totally up for grabs. So Eugene McCarthy will again still be in the race, a, a very, very much of a dove, very much opposed to the war, and he'll run against <laughs> Johnson's vice president, um, Humphreys, Hubert Humphrey, uh, the senator from Minnesota. Humphrey will defeat McCarthy in the primaries, and this is going to make a bunch of anti-war activists really mad and not choose to support the Democratic nominee. Did this happen the last election? Did Mrs. Clinton defeating Mr. Sanders cause some of the support for Mrs. Clinton to not be united. Did Mr. Sanders say, some of his supporters say, I'm not going to support Mrs. Clinton? Did that end up hurting the Democratic Party? I think you can make a pretty strong case that there, yeah, you could say that did happen. In 1968, the National Convention for the Democratic Party was in Chicago, and it was a free for all. Um, riots broke out, anti war demonstrations broke out in the middle of the convention. It's being nationally televised. Uh, Mayor Daley uh, brings out 12,000 police and 5,000 National Guard. It doesn't look good in the minds of the American voter. The Democratic Party looks like they're in chaos. The Republicans will choose uh, a candidate that had run against um, Mr. Kennedy, um, Mr. Nixon. And he's been quiet now for a while. Uh, he lost in 1960 to Mr. Uh, Kennedy. He was a uh, two-time vice president for Mr. Um, Eisenhower, and he's going to be the Republican candidate. He's looked as the safe guy, the safe bet, and he vows if he gets in the Vietnam War, he will end the Vietnam War and restore law and order back in the United States. On the, if you can believe this, uh, on the far right of the Democratic Party is a gentleman by the name of George Wallace. He's the governor of Alabama. He is a separate uh, segregist. Um, he is opposed to uh, integrating blacks into the schools. And then he will run and he'll run as a third party candidate. And he's even going to take more votes away from the Democratic Party. Consequently, um, Mr. Nixon will win a pretty easily uh, contested um, election in 1968, and then we're looking to get out of the war, right? Well, no, we're going to stay in it a little bit longer, and we're going to escalate things. Um, 
Shocker, politician says one thing and sometimes does another. So we're gonna stop there for right now, and um, we're gonna get into the tail end of the war from 1968 until 19, really 72, and then we'll get all the way out in 74, and then we'll end it.